What's going on everybody? I know you clicked on this video because you know jump rope is one of the best ways to get lean and shredded But you're finding it a little bit difficult or you don't exactly know where to start or you're simply trying to make your jump rope a little bit smoother Don't worry. I got you guys covered today We're going over everything you need to know as a beginner starting from how to choose a rope properly how to measure it The proper form while jumping and as well the mistakes that you need to avoid so when it comes to choosing a rope, we got to understand that not all ropes are the same and that different types of ropes are used for different types of jumping. And as a beginner, we're not really going to be focusing on doing any tricks. We're going to be focusing on establishing a good rhythm. And in my opinion, the number one rope for doing this is a heavy or a Muay Thai style jump rope. Now, because the rope is weighted, it's going to make it a lot easier to know where it is while you're skipping and it's going to make you trip a lot less. If you do decide to go with this rope, it's important to make sure that the weight is in the actual rope itself and not in the handles. I've tried the one where the weight is in the handles and personally, I think they're completely useless and I don't really recommend them to anybody. Now, if you're unable to get the Muay Thai rope for whatever reason, then the next best option is any sort of simple PVC rope. These ropes can be found almost anywhere. They're extremely cheap. They're also very comfortable to use. And once you start to get better, they're very good for doing tricks. Unlike the Muay Thai rope, which is used more for a full body workout and to establish good footwork. Now, if you don't have access to either of these ropes, just use whatever you have, that's also fine. The next step is measuring the rope and how we're gonna do this is step on the middle of the rope with one foot, not two, and we're gonna bring it up towards our head and we want it to reach the bottom of our chest. Now, we see here that the rope is just a little bit too long and how I wanna fix this is by tying knots in the rope. Now, some of the ropes you're gonna find that you can adjust the length on the ends, but I personally prefer to tie knots as I found that it makes my skipping a lot smoother. If the rope is too long, you're going to find that it bounces off of the ground and you're going to end up tripping over it a lot like you can see here in this clip. Now, if it turns out that the rope is too short, then I personally would invest in a new rope. Now, we see here that after tying the knots that the rope comes to the bottom of my chest, now this is a good length and we're ready to start skipping. So we want to make sure that we're nice and relaxed and staying nice and light on our feet. Notice here that my elbows are slightly bent. I'm making small circular motions with my wrist. My knees are also bent. And I'm on the balls of my feet and I'm not staying flat footed. And I like to pinch my shoulder blades together. And this is what it looks like when we put it all together. <laughs> and now for my favorite part of the video is all the mistakes you guys need to avoid. Now the first mistake is jumping from one foot to another and I was definitely guilty of this when I started out and I know a lot of you guys are as well and it kind of looks like Donkey Kong jumping if you look at it closely but uh, yeah don't do this. Make sure you're jumping on both feet and you're not jumping from one foot to another. The next one is two jumps for every one rotation and this is definitely the most common mistake that I see. You really want to make sure that you're doing one jump for every one rotation. The third mistake is keeping your feet glued together. Now you don't want to keep them too wide apart, but at the same time, you don't want them glued together. You want to keep a small distance between them and stay nice and light on your feet. Now the fourth mistake is not bending your elbows and your knees. And a lot of people complain about joint pain, and this is definitely one of the reasons why. You want to make sure that you have a slight bend in both of them. And this is also going to make your form better and make tricks a lot easier once you do start to get better. Also, make sure that you're not flat footed and you're jumping on the balls of your feet. The fifth mistake is making too big a circular motions with your wrist. Now, obviously here in this clip, you can see that I exaggerated a little bit, but you want to make sure that you're making small circular motions with your wrists. And guys, that's really all there is to it. And the most important thing is that you're practicing on a daily basis because there's only so much you can learn from a video. You need to practice, 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 because as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. And of course, consistency is key. I get a lot of compliments now on my jumping, but what people don't realize is that I was not very good when I started, and here's a video to show that. You're going too wide, man. Now there was times when I got really frustrated and I wanted to give up, but I stayed consistent with it and I was able to work up to where I am today. If I was able to get better at it, then you guys definitely can too, so stay consistent with it for at least a few weeks to a month, and I promise you guys will see results. Now what I suggest for beginners for the first few weeks is to dedicate five minutes a day to practice. And once you start to get better, you can start to do 10 minutes and then eventually work your way up to 30 minutes, which is what I'm doing right now. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you guys benefited in any way, please give me a like and share, as that really helps me out. I'm also on Instagram, you guys can follow me there, consistency is key 9 and I will see you guys in the next video.